All right, all right, all right. And we are back with the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez here, your favorite wrestling fan, your wrestling guru. Every Monday through Friday on the GSMC Sports Network, going to talk about everything in terms of professional wrestling. Let's kind of reflect on what we talked about right quick. We talked about our WWE NXT review, and now we're going to talk about some AEW Dynamite preview that's happening right now. Can't wait to watch it. You know, I have it recorded right now. Can't wait to, uh, you know, get into that. But before we do any, before we do any of that, I just want to remind you guys to hit that super chat. Whether if you got a burning question or a hot take in terms of professional wrestling, or something you want to get off your chest. This show is all about keeping the conversation going, making sure your voice is part of the mix. So do not be shy. Drop those thoughts, opinions, and questions inside the chat. And if you really want to make sure your comment or question gets read on air, I ask you guys to use that super chat. Hit that dollar sign below the chat box. Uh, you know, sending your message is guaranteed to be featured on the show. Plus, it's a great way to support the GSMC Sports Network. Keep all this awesome sports content coming your way on a daily basis. Uh, you know, we are absolutely so grateful for each and every one of you guys who tune in daily. Um, you know, to the to the, all the shows, all the great podcasters we have here on the network. Um, you know, so let's keep these conversations going. You know, let's put in those super chats, hit up those super stickers because you guys are super awesome. And together, we will make sure this show. Is bigger, better, and stronger than ever. But, uh, you know, if you're not too keen on the Super Chat, oh, you can always hit up the gsmcpodcast.net. Hit up the tips and donations link. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Give me some of your opinions. Superman Punch that. Like a subscribe button to the show. Follow the show. Follow the network here at the GSMC Sports Network. We do love a lot of peace, love, and positivity 1,010% of the time. But if you have some criticisms, of course, feedback is a gift. So, you know, don't be a... Uh, Give it the Eric Rodriguez guarantee that you will never, ever, 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 ever regret subscribing to such an amazing sports network who, uh, you know, who um, love the fans. Always want to give you guys a thousand and ten percent of awesome content. All right. So it's Wednesday. You know what that means. AEW Dynamite is live in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky, I believe. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> uh, so. We have a huge dynamite. Uh, you know, obviously this is the you know the you know the the fallout of all out. The fallout of all out. I like that. That's kind of crazy. Uh so there's definitely gonna be a lot of I guess there's a special collision taping tonight as well. Um, um so the John Moxley is gonna be live. You know, recently, you know, AEW has been dealing with a lot of scrutiny, claiming that their uh claiming that their programming is a little too violent. You know, and it's not like it's not violent, but they they know exactly what they're doing. They know how far they can push those boundaries. But, uh, you know, even on Twitter, All Elite Wrestling, you know, due to the graphic nature on the attack by to Brian Danielson, we are unable to share this footage. AEW does not condone such actions. So maybe this girl, you know, having this petition or this uh, former AEW fan because they want AEW off the map. Um, maybe they are kind of making waves, you know, that that's, you know, that's kind of crazy. You know, I didn't, I didn't think that, you know, um, you know, it was going to be all that much of a lashback, but, uh, you know, I'm not saying AEW is going to be like, okay, now we kind of have to be on our best behavior, but, uh, I don't know. It should be pretty crazy. Obviously we're going to see John Moxley explain the attack. Claudio Castanoli and the bastard pack also are going to be on tonight's AEW dynamite. I'm interested to find out as well. You know, Wheeler Yuta was, you know, kind of left out of the mix. Blackpool, Black Blackpool Combat Club is out. You know, it, it's over. It's all over. And um John Moxley wants a shot at that AEW World Heavyweight Championship. I don't know, you know, if Tony Khan's gonna give it to him. Maybe perhaps you see Moxley dethrone Brian Danielson. But kind of like what I was mentioning before, Brian Danielson, he's due for uh, neck surgery at the end of this year. I think he's going to relinquish the title. He's gonna end out on top. He's going to face. AEW's greatest wrestlers that they have on the promotion. And he's going to go out on such a high note. And he deserves it. Throughout his whole tenure with AEW, ever since he signed, Tony Khan wanted to put the belt on him. He said no, promote these other guys because he knew that his um he knew that his career is, you know, is short. He knows that he's not going to be around professional wrestling as a full-time wrestler, you know, all that much. As a part-time wrestler on AEW, Brian Daniels can, can do it a thousand and ten percent. But, you know, you see Swerve when he was the champion. You know, he'd fight on a weekly basis sometimes on collision for his title. Same with Samoa Joe, MJF. And, you know, I feel like Brian Danielson, ultimately, these are his boys. 
They're co-workers. It's a wrestling cohesion. These guys are family. They go on on a road together 365 days of the year. I wouldn't want to do that to my, you know, co-worker as well. You know what I mean? Especially if I'm going on neck surgery, I'm like, you know what? When I come back, you know, I kind of just want to be a part-timer. I don't want to take away anything from you guys because you guys work so damn hard. And I want to hear half the time you guys are here the full time. Um, maybe not even half the time, maybe like 25 or 35 percent of the time. Um, but, um, you know, I get this, uh, you know, kind of get this feud going a little bit. I kind of like it. You know, former friends, obviously, they knew each other from WWE. But and it should be pretty cool. Next, we have an eliminator match. We have uh, Mariah May taking on Queen Aminata. This match is going to be definitely a sleeper, one of the best matches tonight. Uh, Queen Aminata was literally seconds away. She was just like a good, a good hardcore move away from becoming, you know, the new Ring of Honor World um, Women's Heavyweight Champion, dethroning, uh, you know, the dominant Athena. Uh, I think this match is going to be great. I think this match is, you know, set to be an instant classic. Mariah May on, uh, you know, all out, you know, kind of, you know, defeating, um, who did you, oh, God, who was that girl? Uh, Sheeta? No, not Sheeta. I think that was who, uh, damn it, I can't think of it right now. But she's a great champion. You know, so far, I was kind of skeptical when because Tony Storm was, was amazing as a women's champion. But um, Mariah May seems like she's doing her due diligence and she's pulling justice, you know, being a contender in the women's division. She's, you know, obviously the face, obviously the face of the, you know, of the Mariah May. Um, but honestly, can the, the can the queen do it? You know, can she earn a, a, the women's title shot tonight? Should be pretty awesome. I can't wait to see that against the Glamour, who currently reigns supreme on AEW. Next, we have a tag team, Casino Gauntlet. The winner, obviously, going to take on the AEW World Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks. Pretty much, I'm, you know, making, you know, it'd be kind of cool to see Will Ospreay team up with uh, Ricochet. You know, that'd be pretty interesting tag team to go. Um, the next people in line, you know, um, I don't honestly know who would be rightful people in line. Maybe... You know, Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin make their debut tonight. That would be a bombshell. That'd be crazy. Maybe Eric's a little crazy, but, you know, I, th I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, Four, you're going to see probably Kyle O'Reilly, Orange Cassidy team up. Uh, you're going to see a lot in, like, you know, tag teams, the acclaimed. You know what? To be honest, I'm kind of tired of the acclaimed. I, I, you know, I, I respect them. You know, maybe the Bang Bang Gang as well, Private Party. You know, it's uh, the learning tree. I don't think that any of those teams are going to win it. I think it's going to be someone who could who could seriously dethrone Matthew Nicholas Jackson of those World Tag Team titles. So I feel like this is going to be a great match. Definitely going to be um, you know, pretty sick. It's going to be pretty sick. All right, next we have a TNT Championship match. We have the scapegoat Jack Perry taking on Leo Rush. To be honest, I, I kind of feel like Jack Perry is going to come out the winner. You know, he did have, you know, he... Gave it all he got. He gave it all he got against the AEW World Heavyweight Champion, uh, Brian Danielson. Definitely think, uh, you know what? I, I you know, kind of want to issue an apology. Um, I always kind of thought Jack Perry was kind of a punk. You know, and you could sometimes you can be a little, you know, conceited, you know, a little cocky, a little self-centered and arrogant. But this guy does put on good matches. You know, sometimes I'm like, dude, why are they giving the belt to him? Or why, you know, why is this guy smashing TVs in a promo? And then all of a sudden a Taco Bell commercial comes. I'm just kidding. No. Um, why is uh, why is he fighting for the, you know, world championship? This guy's trash. But he's not. He's not. The scapegoat side, you know, the way that they're handling Jack Perry right now, I feel like is actually pretty cool. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind he's going to defeat Leo Rush tonight. Kind of just like a nice little reassurance match showing the AEW universe that this guy still can throw hands. And he's made to be taken seriously. Next, we have a one-on-one -on -one match. We have the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, uh, Sammy Guevara, taking on uh, Ricochet. So, uh, you know, that kind of puts my idea about Ricochet being in this tag team. A uh, Casino Gauntlet match away. Um, you know, should be interesting to find out maybe if Dustin Rhodes and the, the other guy uh, from the, the Trio Championship, maybe they find a way to kind of jump on into this match. I got a chat from my boy Anthony Manzano. Is it a possible? Is it a? Is it possible that Shane McMahon is the mastermind behind the purveyors of violence? The new stable with John Moxley and Shane just uh, hasn't debuted yet. You know that that's a good question. That's a very good question. 
I, I could definitely see that. I can definitely see why, you know, you'd be thinking something like that. Obviously, Shane McMahon, he wanted to come back to WWE. He was doing that WWE underground, introducing kind of like an underground fight club, kind of having WWE kind of push the boundary of, a you know, kind of like the Attitude Era. And I feel like if the, you know, if AEW, you know, continues pushing the boundaries of violence, Shane McMahon is not afraid to take a bump. You've seen him jump off of Hell in the Cells, jumping off the, you know, jumping off the the decal of the stage of the pay-per-view onto, uh, you know, to, like you've seen him being thrown through the glass at King of the Ring. Uh, he's he's a badass and he could definitely a thousand and ten percent. I can see how he would love to kind of go with that, with that angle of being like hardcore, you know, uh, John Moxley, Shane McMahon. I, I feel like it's possible. I feel like it's possible a thousand and ten percent. Especially with this new deal that AEW has upcoming with the Warner Brothers Discovery and the new rumored around that you know Fox might um you know fight Fox might be uh in and in, um investing in some AEW stock. So it should be, you know, I feel like it could be it's a heavily, you know, it could it's possible. It's possible, it could be a thousand to ten percent possible. That's actually a very good point. I love I love that. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, uh tonight on on Dynamite, who what else do we have to talk about? So we have a pretty good dynamite loaded up for you guys tonight. I can't wait to find out what John Moxley has to say. I can't wait. It'd be crazy if uh, Shane McMahon debuted uh, tonight. That would be insane. Uh, crazy to see this. Uh, you know what happened with MJF. Uh, obviously, you kind of had um, you know um, the guy he faced at All Out, Daniel Garcia. Damn it! Why am I blanking on names today? Damn it! Uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm interested to find out what's next for Will Ospreay. Obviously, you know, what's going to happen with Darby Allen? You know, he has a championship match coming up, too. You know, it's I don't think Swerve Strickland's going to be at Dynamite tonight. You know, he got pretty messed up. Got pretty messed up. Uh, Hangman Adam Page as well. Um, I think a couple of these guys you're probably not going to see on Dynamite tonight. You know, well, not, not, not see them. Probably in a match. But, um, you know, you do have their next pay-per-view coming up right around the corner. So, um, you know, should be pretty awesome. Um, I got another chat from my man. Uh, where do you think this storyline between him and Darby ends uh, ends up going to talk about John Moxley doing things to convince Darby to join Moxley? Um, that could possibly be it. And he looked, uh, you know, Tony Giovanni straight in, straight in the face and he was talking about Darby. You know, he was going to call out Darby Alling. Obviously, he did, you know, it, it, he left a lot of po- like a lot of poked holes, which in wrestling you know, usually leads to just something absolutely shocking. Like we're, like you said, like maybe Shane McMahon makes his way into AEW finally after all the rumors, you know, after him meeting up with Tony Khan, um, you know, Tony Khan basically saying, hey, honestly, we would love Shane, you know, in the boardroom, the creative room, we'd love to see him inside the ring. That's, this is kind of like a dream job for Shane McMahon. Like, you know, I could see, you know, him definitely taking a, you know, a small contract, uh, just to kind of, you know, help Tony Khan make this uh, wrestling promotion, you know, better than it already is. But um, that would be a pretty interesting storyline. Maybe see Darby Allen kind of turn heel. Uh, I, I know I, I read a story saying that, um, you know, possibly Ricochet turns heel as well. But I don't think he would really have anything to do with John Moxley. Darby Allen, um possibly turning heel. That would be pretty crazy, you know, because he's loved by the fans so damn much. Uh, but, you know, only time will tell. Only time will tell. Obviously, can't wait to watch. Dynamite tonight. Can't wait to see what's going to happen uh, tonight on a fresh episode of a batch of dynamite. All right, guys. So, hey, do not go anywhere in our third segment. We're going to talk about some, uh, we're going to talk about WWE SmackDown after the 9 11 attacks. Obviously, the nation was scared. A lot of uh, sports things closed. And the only thing that kind of popped up first was uh, WWE. So, we're going to dig into, um, you know, how WWE tributed to, um, you know, they did a tribute to 9-11 and how it, you know, still affects WWE and just the world overall to this day. So, hey, do not go anywhere. 